Well, very few reporters in Detroit know Kwame Kilpatrick better than Vicki Thomas of WWJ News Radio 950 and our own ML Elric. So when they heard a Kilpatrick documentary was coming, they arranged a sneak preview and then they filed this review. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> What's going on? A new Fox 2 feature where we look at every documentary ever made about Kwame Malik Kilpatrick, the former mayor of Detroit. This week, we start with KMK, a documentary of Kwame Kilpatrick, and I'm joined by Vicki Thomas of WWJ Radio, who's known Kwame Kilpatrick since he was before the mayor. Vicki, thanks for joining us. Hey, it's great to be here. Now, we just saw Mr. Kilpatrick in an unguarded moment coming out of Jackson Prison. What does that mean to you? What, what did you take away from that? Well, that scene, I tell you, I was there that day. It was early in the morning. I drove up to Jackson in the dark and um, uh, disappointed that we weren't able to get a hold of the mayor, you know, be close enough to even ask a question. We were, you know, yards away. And for these filmmakers, Tobias and Tim Smith, to have that kind of access to me was amazing. But like the mayor himself said uh, at one point in this uh, film, you know, people either, either loved me or they hated me. Yeah. And that's pretty much the case. Well, some of the emotion you do get is from the Kilpatrick family. And one of the scenes that really struck me was this one with his father, Bernard Kilpatrick. He was basically a, a product of his environment. And the, the, the church that we came up in, at Shrines of the Black Madonna, we taught basically that black folks had to make their way in this world, that there was nobody riding in to help us. In fact, uh, they were basically against us when we tried to do something. So I thought it was, it, was, it was so insightful because what we heard from Mayor Kilpatrick when he came into office was it's time for us to put the racial politics of the past behind us. Yet when he got in trouble, he would play that race, race card, card right. and, and you wonder where is that coming from? How did he really feel? And here we have his father saying, you know what? This is how we were raised. This is what we believed in. And you, you came to see over the course of Mr. Kilpatrick's 10 years, and we knew him, from the beginning, that, that that teaching really bubbled up and it came to be his dominant explanation for why he did almost everything that he did. We caught Kwame's only reaction when we found out he had to report immediately to prison. Shock, uh, confusion. Uh, immediately thought about my sons, my wife, and my mother. Uh, tough, man. Uh, but I'm a trust God on this. Well, you can see there, Elric, um, and I knew all along that Kwame Kilpatrick thought he was going to be exonerated. He did not think he was going to be convicted. So you can see from some of the segments in the film that really that's what uh, Kwame Kilpatrick thought, that they were coming after him with both barrels blazing. You wonder if Kilpatrick on some level actually understood that. And this scene in particular where he says, did I let people down? Well, here's what he had to say about that. I believe that people had great faith and hope and, and, and that my administration could turn the city around. And, you know, I, I 
went into a courtroom and I lied about an affair that I was having and I let a lot of people down. But including there were rumors family. or speculation early on that the family was behind this production. The filmmakers say that's absolutely not true. Right. I will tell you, I play a small role in this movie and when they interviewed me, it was a lengthy interview and it seemed like every question was geared to, well, the mayor didn't really do this or the mayor's not really responsible for this or the mayor shouldn't be blamed for this or the mayor was really good in this way. And I couldn't agree with those points because of what I knew about what had happened. But the one part they used from my interview the was, titillating part. was the one where I did agree with them, <laughs> which was that there was no Manukin Mansion party. So, so there is I, some wait, very wait, selective wait, wait, editing wait, wait. in this movie. I heard you were at the party. I was Who, at the party. What male was not at the party? Because I heard police chiefs, I heard... Well, you know. I was, I'm raspberry, in case you heard that. <laughs> Strawberry. Good. Nobody wants to talk about me dancing <laughs> Strawberry naked, and so, raspberry. Yeah, was, was, <laughs> together we made a hell of a fruit salad. But, uh, and, and on that point, maybe we should leave it there. Um, we want to thank the Gem Theater for letting us in this beautiful space. And until the very next Kwame Kilpatrick documentary, I'm M.L. Elric from Fox 2, Vicki Thomas from WWJ Radio. And I give it a thumbs up. And until further notice, the balcony is closed.